Are you on the Lord's side? Come on, single Mary, are you on the Lord's side? I saw you standing up. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this time. We thank you, Lord God, that you're with us on this morning. We thank you, Lord God, that this word that is coming forth will educate, illuminate, and change lives in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you right now for lifting up the hung down head. We thank you for restoring joy and peace. We thank you for healing the sick body. We thank you for making the crooked places straight. And we just thank you for this opportunity to stand behind the sacred desk and declare what thus saith the Lord. That the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Amen. Go with me to Isaiah 9, beginning at the sixth verse. Isaiah 9 and 6. Reading from the NSRB. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders. And he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish it and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. So far the scriptures. Our thought for today, change the world. Change the world. The prophet Isaiah continually speaks to Israel concerning their behavior, which is unbecoming as a people who God has done so much for, but yet remain inconsistent and ungrateful to God. Isaiah remains consistent in his assignment as the messenger of God, while he doesn't lose ground to the truth, he shares the heart of God, waiting for repentance. If not from all the people, then those who would repent. Now we know, realistically, everyone is not coming to God. Uh -huh. There are some who will double down and say there is no God. And the Bible covers them when it says the fool has said in his heart, yeah. there is no God. Yeah. But for those who will, and then the Bible said, whosoever will call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So it is said there will be some and there will be others. But we can't concern ourselves so much with those who won't. But for those who will, this is a message of encouragement. Change the world. God requires faithfulness from God's people to show the world that a godly life is attainable and doable. But Israel would not yield in giving God all, distracted by anything that seemed more attractive to their eyes. There is no doubt that the church of today has lost its focus in the face of the pl a plethora of distractions and negative voices. Former presidents meeting with avowed racists, the loss of civility, kindness, and cooperation combined <coughs> with more greed. You know, some of these things get sort of mixed in and people look like they're doing right even when they're doing wrong. So you always have to be careful and some people will use one piece of good yeah. to carry out their message of evil. Yeah. And it sounded good. 
And most Ponzi schemes sounded so good. And all I need is, and when you hear those words, all I need is, then you know you better look out and hold on to your wallet. Greed, corruption in foreign lands, as well as right here around us, can make even the most faithful persons blink and question God and ask, what's going on? The Marvin Gaye classic of that same name, released in 1971, during a very tumultuous time, Vietnam War, protests, flag burning, a lot of stuff going on. But then again, that's all we've been drinking last week. Mother, mother, there's too many of you crying. Brother, 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 far too many of you dying. Too many to name in this sermon. <coughs> but I lift up Shaquella Robinson, killed by so-called friends in Mexico. The two children killed by their mother in the Bronx. What's going on? What's going on? In our text, the prophet has been told to offer hope to the people in spite of obvious challenges that otherwise offer no hope to a disobedient people. And when I say that, I'm saying when you know you've done wrong, if you're being honest with yourself, you know you don't deserve any good. Check with your kids. They already know. Well, what am I getting for Christmas? Well, how are your grades? Well, have you been doing the things I told you to do? Well, have you been obedient? No. Then what do you think you deserve? Just throw that out there. But God, only God, merciful God, forgiving God, offers us an olive branch. A way of escape through God's self to redeem humankind. As you and I think of ourselves and how often we disappointed God, but another chance comes along for us that will allow us to change the world. You ask, how can I change the world? I have messed up in every way possible. I've lied and said, Lord, if you give me another chance. And after that, I got another chance. And I messed up again. But I stopped by to tell you that the Lord has been waiting on us to get our acts together. Stop playing at church. Stop playing with that woman's husband. That man's wife. That bottle. That weed. Etc. Because the world needs to see that if God can save a knucklehead like me, there is hope. And because if one can chase a thousand and two put ten thousand to flight, it stands to reason that we have the ability to influence so many by doing it God's way. Because somebody's always watching us. And we get a chance to change the world. Sometimes we get so down on ourselves. <laughs> We suffer from low self-esteem when it seems as though we can make a difference in the world. And somebody says, how can I make a difference? Sometimes it's as simple as smiling and saying good morning. Sometimes it is as simple as nodding your head. I see you to the invisible person. And you say, well, how can I see the invisible person? Well, he's lying right there. You call him the homeless man. Yeah, well, yeah. And you want to make him invisible. Uh -huh. 
You want to say he's not there. You see the drug addicted person. And you say, well, I'm too prim, too proper, too proud to see that person. That's the invisible person. But if you can smile at that invisible person who society has deemed invisible, if you can say here's, you can't even say here's a quarter, you have to say here's a dollar. Get yourself a cup of coffee. You have made that invisible person visible. You have restored humanity to someone who stands in need. You can change the world. You see, our God is not like man, making deals and then not honoring them, or knowing the rules and then doing everything that he can to violate them. The covenant with Abraham had to be honored whether the people were totally compliant or not. It's impossible to do business with someone who has no character or morals. And our God is not a man that he should lie. So, God kept the covenant. Uh -huh. When Dr. King wrote, where do we go from here? Chaos or community? He was the prophet speaking to inspire hope, although he knew all the players at the table had no love for blacks in America. Yes. But he still had to speak truth to power. Yes. He knew America had reneged on 20 acres and a mule, uh -huh. but he kept speaking until his voice was silent. He was sent here to change the world. Our God did not give up on humankind. We tend to do that to ourselves. But God. Jeremiah 31 and 3 lets us know God's intentions. As the prophet spoke, yes, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn you. And I might have bet you $50 that that was the words of Jesus until I found it in Jeremiah. See, I lost my money. That's why I fooled his money soon, Paul. That sounds like Jesus. Yes, it does. But it also now sounds like Jeremiah. In our text, the future is now. Unto us, a child is born. Unto us, a son is given. And the government shall be on his shoulder. And his name, names that sinful man cannot wear, shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the one who makes wise plans and offers good guidance. Mighty God, the Lord himself, everlasting Father, a benevolent protector, a God who cares for God's people in spite of all of the shortcomings. A father who never fails us. Yes. A father who loves us. A father who is always there. I saw a picture of LeBron James and two of his sons. I don't know if he has any more. And he was saying his dad walked out on him. And he didn't know who he was. But there he was standing with his two boys. Yes. Looking to be the father that his father was. Yes. Never mind what you might have learned. And then he asked the question, what might I have been had he been there? So it wasn't bitter in the sense of saying, I just would throw it all away. But realizing that things can change, and they might not have been for the better. But then when you get what you get, you have to learn to make what you can make out of it. If you've ever watched MacGyver, MacGyver takes a piece of gum, a safety pin, and some sort of backward hook, and makes some kind of thing to get out of some trouble. And some of us in our lives, 
had been left with a safety pin, a piece of gum, and a little backwards look. And we ask the Lord, what am I supposed to do with this? But God is saying, use what you have in your hands to make a difference. Don't worry about what the other guy has. The other guy has his own stuff to do. But what can you do with what I gave you? So Moses, look at that rock. You think you don't have anything. But look at the rod I gave. Yeah, yeah. Now use it. <laughs> use it. Mm -hmm. Hold it up yeah. and watch change occur. Yeah. I've been given some stuff and I feel like I've been given a raw deal. But God is saying, use what I gave yeah. you. Yeah. You're going to change the world. God is saying, no, you didn't go to Harvard. No, you didn't go to Yale. You went to community college. Yeah. But that doesn't mean you don't have as many brains as the person who went to Harvard and Yale. That's it. They don't have any more brains than you. They just probably have more debt. So God has made it possible for us to do because God is not a respecter of person. Uh -huh. That God has a plan in mind. And you are going to change the world. Amen. So you keep talking about that, Pastor, but I, I, I'm, not, I'm not feeling all that so cute. Well, well. But, back to our text, that God is going to bother always providing for us. Yes. Forever faithful. And then he's the prince of peace, a ruler who is just and whose word can be relied on on the increase, spoken of the increase of the greatest King David. And all of this because the Lord of hosts has spoken. Because when God said it, that's it. When God said it, that's enough. Somebody wrote a song and said, I got Jesus and that's enough. Yeah. And if you keep on living, you'll find out exactly what that means. Because yeah. yeah. some of us sell ourselves short. And therefore, we sell Jesus short. Yeah. How can Jesus do this and how can Jesus do that? If you trust him, yeah. he'll show you. Now, the people weren't ready for Jesus. Amen. His pending birth was not glory. His lineage, not directly from the royal household. His upbringing, nondescript. Son of a carpenter. So no great expectations. But rarely does God give all the wherefores and how it gets done. You see, God works in mysterious ways. His wonders to perform. And you've been sitting around trying to figure God out because you're so strong. But I'm here to tell you with all your brains, you still can't figure God out. Amen. And we have to then trust God. See, I don't have anything to work with. Do you have any trust? Do you have any faith? Uh-huh. Do you believe? Then you have more than enough. Amen. Because those who don't have hope don't have anything. But I came to tell you that if you have hope, yeah. that if you have faith the yeah. size of a mustard seed, God will move mountains on Amen. your behalf. Amen. Oh, my God, my God. Jesus came to change the world. Amen. He spoke truth to the powers that be, laid a foundation for justice, and revealed God love to a people who needed to be loved and valued. He changed the world, not with a battle axe, but with a sword called the word of God that is perpetually sharp, cutting away all the ties that bind us to sin. He changed the world, starting a movement that still exists, although it has been challenged, denied, and repudiated by those who use it for a cup. You know those folks. They hold up a Bible upside down and say, I know Jesus. <laughs> Give me a photo 
I, I'll tell you, I, I love, I know Jesus. I told people to say Merry Christmas again. That doesn't make you godly. Well, well, yeah. Think everybody's stupid. Just because you look godly doesn't make you godly. And it is your character yes, yes. that proves how godly you are. Yes. It is the trust that others can have in you yes. that proves how godly you are. Yes. It is your word that is always your word that shows how godly you are. Yes. It is your love that you have one for another that shows how godly you are. Yes. It is your kindness yes. That shows how godly you are. Yeah. It is your ability to share even when you don't have a lot yourself. Yeah. I'm reminded of the widow's might. Yeah. She gave all she had. Yeah. She wasn't rich. But she was rich yeah. Yeah. in understanding of giving. Yeah. And it shall be given to you good measure. Press down, shaking together and running over. Shall men and women give it to your bosom? Yes. Change the word. Yes. Oh, yes. Because of Calvary, it separates those who front Christianity mm -hmm. from those who truly are followers of Christ. Uh -huh. Because of Calvary. But for those who embrace Calvary and the man standing on Calvary, on a cross, hung on a cross, for those who embrace it, the blood still works. The people hearing these scriptures didn't fully understand but for them, this was life changing. Mm -hmm. uh, many of our ancestors did not wish to die enslaved. But recognizing that there was a God, honored God's words, and had hopes for our freedom generations apart from them, that would change the world as they saw it. Yes, yes. What they saw was for the wretch undone. There was a chance to change the world. Uh -huh. That for the drug addicted, yeah. there was a chance to change the world. Uh -huh. That for the formerly incarcerated, yeah. and even those presently incarcerated, yeah. there's a chance to change the world. Yeah. That for those who seem to have a multitude of faults, yeah. we serve a God yeah. that looks beyond our faults. Yeah and sees our needs, we can change the world. Everybody's looking for the big thing in order to be noticed. But I'm here to tell you that it's the little things that mean a lot. It's the consistency of your behavior that whether up or down, you still have a smile on your face. That whether it seems good or bad, you have learned to give God thanks in all of the situation. And somebody's watching you. And they're saying, what must I do to be saved? Because I'm watching that brother and I'm watching that sister. They're always trying to make somebody else feel glad. They're always trying to be helpful. And even though things are up against them, they are still being helpful to somebody because they know God's got me that goodness and mercy are following me. So I gotta do my thing to help somebody else. I'm covered under the blood of Jesus. To make a change in the world. To say to some little boy or girl, you can make it. Put your nose in that book. Get it out of that little girl's face. Get it out of that little boy's face. But learn something from the books you are reading. Because you need to change the world. You. No matter how much 
give us everyday people a chance to change the world. You may not see it this way, but in every kind act, every kind word, every kind gesture has the potential to change the world. Offering hope for the hopeless, restoration to the outcasts, peace to the restless mind. Stop picking old Kanye. Pray for Kanye. Let the God of peace would touch his mind. We don't have time to jump on the bandwagon. Give them all that.